Hey guys, Earl here with another episode of The Breakdown. In today's episode, we're going to be going over a quartzite tabletop for a client that we normally service here in the Chicagoland area. They happen to have a vacation home in the Lake Geneva. And for this particular client, they're a repeat client, we do travel to Lake Geneva. From our shop, it's roughly about an hour and 20, hour 30 minutes away. But anyhow, let's get right into it. So, what are we working on? A uh, quartzite tabletop. Few key things to know about quartzite. Uh, it is a denser material than marble, yet has nice patterns and veining like marble. Similar to granite in density, that it doesn't scratch that easy. However, it does etch like marble. It has uh, sensitivity to uh, acidic pH cleaners and solutions or food. So a countertop like this would still etch if you spilled food on there and left it on there. However, it's not as easy, as easily scratchable as a marble, limestone, or travertine top. So let's walk right into it. Let's start our video here, walk into our project. As you know, we start every project by protecting. Refinishing this top is a messy process. So first thing we do here is protect. Let me see if I can illustrate the etching that we're trying to remove off this countertop. It's hard to see it in video, but in person at the right angle, and the right lighting, you could definitely see the damage to the finish from food spills, you know, beverage spills, and any liquids that are acidic in pH, which is most of your food items, unfortunately. So anyhow, we go right into it. So what are we going to do here? We are going to grind to remove the damage, hone, polish, seal, and do a final buff. The importance in protection is we don't want to get anything dirty or damage anything around it. The refinishing process is pretty involved and laborious. And because we are doing wet diamond sanding, it does create a lot of slurry, what's referred to our industry, or mud. Basically, when you're sanding a top, you're removing some of that material and the water that you're using as a medium captures a lot of that soil and the very slight surface material that you are removing. So I'd like to illustrate some slurry real quick in this video so you can see what we're talking about. So for light damages like this, we're normally around 200 grit diamond abrasive to remove these light etchings. If you were to really etch this with a really harsh acid, like a toilet bowl cleaner, which you wouldn't use on a countertop, then we may have to go lower. So right around here, we're starting around 200 grit, and we're gonna bring this all the way up to high polish. So I'll show you a video here of our first cut. Here's our guy, Angel. He's uh, very good at refinishing and is my direct, he's my direct lineage, because I, I brought him in from day one and I started his tutelage in natural stone refinishing and restoration when he was new to the industry. He knew how to clean carpet and grout, but he didn't have much experience with stone, and this happened many moons ago, probably about seven years ago, I would say, is when he started tutoring with me and becoming my helper until I groomed him to become a uh, a master technician in refinishing all natural stones. So here he goes, here's Angel. And today Saul will be assisting him. Saul was another guy that, that tutored with me, however, in this case, just for post cleanup and, and neatness and cleanliness, he has Saul assisting him to continue the cleanup process as we go from step to step on this project, it's roughly about seven or eight steps to get to the final product. 
Now, as you can tell on the countertop, it already looks pretty nice. And it's really hard to see that etching. So on a project like this, unless you're there in person and you're looking at it from different angles, it's really hard to see that giant transformation of before and after. So without further ado, as you saw the grinding process, that just con the same process with this machine continues up six or seven steps. Finally, when we get to the end, we are going to dry buff this thing to remove any moisture as we've been wet grinding and honing and polishing it all the way up. Got to remove all that moisture before we seal it. Let it dry a little bit, then finally seal it and buff it out. And of course, after every project is the post cleanup. Wipe everything down. You know, I, I like the tape and drape products because it, they expedite the preparation in protecting, having a protective plastic so you don't splatter stuff and splash stuff on adjacent walls, furniture, chairs, countertops, and floors. Makes post cleanup fairly easy. At the end of this project, we basically wrap up all the plastic and it's garbage. And then we do a wipe down and mop down of all surfaces, all surrounding surfaces. Because even with the plastic, sometimes you still get a little bit. And uh, post cleanup is probably the most underrated part of this job. The 30 minutes you spend prepping a job and protecting your surroundings will save you two to three hours of post cleanup at the end of the job. So for those of guys who do the work or maybe are just curious of why, it's tremendous. I mean, 30 minutes of, of preparing your job and protecting anything and everything around you will save you three hours of headache after the job. I imagine, you know, you've been working on this top for eight hours and then you got another three hours to clean up the surrounding areas. It's, it's frustrating from a technical standpoint, from a person doing the job, but also from a customer perspective of if I'm hiring you to do something for me, and well, sure, this table looks great or this countertop looks great, but then everything else around it looks like it's been hit by a tornado, I would be reluctant to hire you again because clearly you don't respect the workspace or my belongings and my personal space to not protect it knowing you're going to create a mess and since this is what we do every day we understand the kind of mess we're going to make and have to make in order to, to give you the end result that you're looking for so yeah that's that's a big one that i want to touch on real quick but generally speaking let's look at an overview on a project like this tabletop like this normally is about a day day's worth of work and uh, price ranges anywhere from 1250 to 1800 just depending on the material, the damage, and all you know, a few other factors that surround it. So I'm proud to say that we're one of the only companies in our industry that even provide a general pricing guideline. So, and why do we do that? I think it's the most ethical way to, you know, sell a service or a product. So for me as a consumer, if I'm wondering what it costs to, I don't know, fix a chair, I generally want to know before I call you to see if, you know, what the price is, if it's within my budget, if it makes sense for me versus replacing it so that I don't waste your time, I don't waste my time. And like most people, I mean, I, you know, you get that little downtime and you have little projects you want to get done. You, you often find yourself browsing at whatever odd times at night or during the day when you have a free moment, you know, uh, trying to get past the daily busy stuff that we do. So I, I like that, you know, a big key thing that I really, really like is having a general pricing guideline on the website because it helps guide you so that you understand what it is from a service perspective, from a cost perspective. And um, that's what aggravates me a little bit about our industry is that 
you can look at similar companies or similar outfits that do what we do and there's zero reference point there really isn't so I, I wish that this movement would go with most service providers plumbers electricians or anybody really is to provide your client with a general guideline so that they have an expectation of what it is I think that's very important as well so without further ado the before and afters on this project are really not tremendous because this is a vacation home that's used a few times out the year and is well maintained. There's a few areas that need some work. However, it's not dramatic like a lot of the projects we do where you see it and you can't even tell if it's the same surface or it looks like we installed something new on there. So this one is more subtle of a project. However, it matters to our client, and it, so it matters to us. So we were willing to travel a little bit outside of our service area to take care of them. They've been a great client of ours for years, a repeat client year after year. So given those things in consideration, we love to go in above. We love to go above and beyond for the people who support us. With that said, guys, we make these videos for you guys to help you understand what we do and help you understand your own projects. Maybe you have something similar to this. Maybe this is something you're interested in or you need or, you know, for your home or your business. Anyhow, uh, all the links are down below. Our phone number's there, uh, email, and website. If you have a moment, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel. Show us some support as we deliver these videos for you guys. With that said, guys, again, this is Earl with a Breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next episode.